Just how weak is the Republican hand in the debt ceiling debate? Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the MAGA crowd. So Republicans managed to pass their debt ceiling increase, but a debt ceiling increase it was not. It was simply a temporary reprieve with respect to this debt ceiling, with all kinds of giveaways to conservatives and demanding as much as 20% of discretionary f spending to be cut. Now, discretionary spending, people have to say, oh, discretionary spending, oh, it's just waste. What is discretionary spending? That would be the Federal Aviation Administration. How do you want to go flying without air traffic controllers? Or it would be the FBI and other law enforcement. Or how about veterans' benefits? Not to mention the wholesale attack on on food stamps, all this while at the same time cutting funding from the IRS so that they, they can collect from rich tax cheats and cutting the administration's efforts to deal with the climate emergency while providing support to the fossil fuel industry. Where does it end? Well, they claim that this is just to start a discussion, a negotiation with the administration. But the problem is, this isn't a way to start a negotiation. This is extortion. It's like setting fire to your house and then saying, oh, here's a cell phone, but you can only call the fire department if you give me money. All the debt ceiling is, just to remind people, is allowing the federal government to pay its bills it already incurred that most of these members of Congress voted for. My favorite quote in this article in the Wall Street Journal comes from House Budget Committee Chairman Jody Arrington from Texas, who said, we will pay our creditors. We will protect the good faith and credit of the United States, but we will not give the president or any politician a blank check to bankrupt our country. Oh, but wait, they did it three times when Trump was president. And the plan that they have is strikingly similar to what was pushed through in 2011 after the Tea Party took over Congress because God forbid we elect a black president and that plan cost the taxpayers a billion dollars. But here's the thing. The vote ultimately was 217 to 215, meaning that it passed by one vote. That is not a strong hand in negotiations, I've got to tell you. Especially when some of the Republicans who voted for it have already expressed reservations with it, such as Representative Nancy Mace from North Carolina, a moderate who held out to the last minute until she got assurances from the Speaker that he would protect certain industries in her state. And Wall Street is starting to freak out over this. How do we know? Well, the, what we can do is look at what's going on in the bond market. You see, in the bond market, they will take bonds that were already issued with a certain interest rate by different governmental or different business entities. In the case of the United States government, those would be, of course, treasury bonds. The bonds will have different lengths of maturity. In other words, when does the government or the business entity need to pay off the bond with the interest that's promised. Well, as it turns out, the yield is way up. The yield is way down for treasuries that mature before the date that the government is set to run out of money, especially when compared to bonds that mature after the government is going to run out of money. Typically, those bonds tend to move in pretty close concert. But that gap is growing because of the fact that people are holding on to the bonds with short maturities or they want to buy them, meaning that they're willing to pay more. Meaning that, in other words, when the bond gets paid off, the yields, the amount of extra money that they're getting as a result of the interest being paid, isn't as much. And again, that's in comparison to bonds that mature after the date the federal government's going to run out of money. Because of the fact that people are concerned, the government won't be able to pay those bonds on time. So Wall Street's worried. And you're starting to hear talk about this from Wall Street CEOs and economists. So that brings up the key point about this argument, which is that in a debt ceiling vote that the Republicans piled with goodies that the conservatives love, including setting our climate on fire and giving away the store to the very wealthy, the Republicans were able to pass it by one vote. You can't tell me that today's Republican Party is so divorced from the business interests in our, in our country that there isn't at least one or two Republican members of Congress who can be prevailed upon by the businesses in their state to vote for some type of debt ceiling increase. As the deadline nears and things get scarier, you can believe 
that people like Nancy Mace are going to be facing all kinds of pressure from these business groups who they pledge to support. Yes, it is true that Republicans don't seem to be as friendly with big business as they used to be. I mean, just look at Ron DeSantis in Florida with Disney, that state's largest employer and taxpayer. But there are still a lot of Republicans who care about business in the country, which is why you've seen so many Republicans chastise DeSantis over his war with Disney. So it's going to be interesting to see how this develops, but my prediction is that you're going to see the Republicans fold before too long because they don't want to earn the reputation of being anti-business just as they're anti just about everything else. Well, if you want to see another video where I explore the whole debt ceiling debate, check out this video over here. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.